Hi there, welcome to Home Keepers. Hey friend, grab yourself a cup of tea and just sit down and stay with us a little bit. If you haven't seen the program before, we're called Home Keepers. My name's Arthelaine Rippey, and so happy that you are in the audience today. If you stay with us, I know you will be glad at the end of the show because we're going to show you some things that are gonna warm your heart, I promise you. So welcome, welcome, one and all. Newer people, those who've been with us a long time, we love every one of you. Uh, my guest today is one of my favorite kind of people, and that's a missionary. And this is the kind of missionary I just love because they feel that God called them and they just go and do it. I'm anxious for you to meet Wayne Deary and some of the stories of how at the very last minute, I mean the last minute, God has supplied the money for him to get on a plane and go to Africa and other parts of the world and, and build a church. We're going to show you some of these churches and you will be absolutely amazed at what can happen in a brief time with not just tons of money, but you will see worshipers that have nothing to compare with what we have, but when they come together to worship God. And in my opinion, this young man could be the pastor of any great church in the United States of America, but he has chosen uh, to follow the Lord in a, kind of a rough path. I know he doesn't consider it that way, but when I look at the physical toll that it can take, um, my admiration knows no bounds. So I'm glad to have Wayne with me today. We're going to make lemon garlic cream fettuccine. Uh -huh. Have you ever heard of anything that sounds better? Uh, who doesn't love pasta? Who doesn't love cream and garlic and parsley and all those good things. We'll show you how to put it together. Uh, before I do, I again want to offer you a book I think could be very, very valuable for, to you called Food Triggers. Uh, do you ever wonder why you do what you do? Well, there might be a little psychological trigger in there and this good Christian psychologist has kind of put it together. The Bible says, good understanding giveth favor. And uh, take it from another great writer, Shakespeare, who said, know thyself. So if you understand and if you know what these triggers are, uh, whether it's food, alcohol, drugs, or whatever, uh, you might find some favor in that understanding. And this book is yours from Homekeepers for that gift of at least $15. There's a couple ways you can pay for it. Uh, one is your debit card or credit card with that 800 number, 1-800-229-0059. Or the address is Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we'll get them out to you. I think a very, very valuable book uh, that we are offering you. So I hope you'll take advantage of it. And I have a question for Stephanie. Who doesn't love pasta? No one I know. <laughs> me, me either. <laughs> you know how much I love pasta. My and dad's there's spaghetti. no end to what you can do with mm -mm. it. And this just smells so fresh mm -hmm. and so yummy. I just can't wait. So you're ready to get started? I'm ready. Okay, you have some lemon peel, you have some garlic, and you have some parsley, and you're mm -hmm. just going to mix those together for me. I have some this butter. This is all fresh. All fresh. I have some butter in a pan already melted. I'm just going to throw some onions in there and saute them for and a minute. And since this is fresh garlic, I'm going to just put just a tiny a bit, bit in. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we still have to work with each other for the rest yeah. of the day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we want to stay friendly. Yes. Okay, so I have onion. I'm sautéing it for a little bit. Ooh, is that? Oh yeah, yeah. that's gonna be so be good perfume. Yes, and then yeah. I have some garlic and some lemon peel that I'm gonna put in here. And you're gonna want to follow the directions. Don't do it as fast as I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. We're kind of doing it a little bit faster than we should. So garlic. Yeah, I let that let that go a couple minutes because mm -hmm. those two, the garlic and the onions, they need to the really get, lemon peel. get married. You know. Yes, they need to get married. Speaking mm -hmm. of marriage, with my parents are celebrating their fiftieth wedding anniversary, and she's out of here. And I'm out of here tomorrow night. Very short amount of time. Yes. They'll and you said all the up. kids will be there? Uh, well, me and my um, younger brother and my older sister, my older brother is, isn't able to make it this time. Let me tell you a little story. Okay. Um, my entire family, they were all at my parents' house for their 42nd anniversary. My brother was there, my sisters, their husbands, uh, me and my husband, Don Rippey. And the Lord spoke to me and said, if you're ever going to do anything for an anniversary, you do it. Now, here we are. Daddy's pastoring a nice church. And I told my siblings, and 
we got together, we rented tables and tablecloths and got a cake and, and somehow got the word out to the congregation. I oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know how we did it. Wow. But that's the last anniversary my dad had. Mm. The Lord uh, they spoke never, to your they heart never would have, you They never would have made it to the 50th. So. Wow. wow. Well, I'm so thankful. And they were so thrilled. I'm sure they never had a wedding cake in their life yeah, you know, yeah. up to that point. Well, if it were up to me, we'd have a big shindig like that. But, you know, my parents, they just like small and simple. So we're having a cookout for them. Mm -hmm. And we'll do all the cooking and the cleaning up and everything. And they can just mm -hmm. sit and enjoy us. No. <laughs> Well, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah. I enjoy my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids. Yes. I don't have any great-greats yet. Yet. Not yet. Yeah, but you'll hear about them, aren't you? No. <laughs> okay, so we have some cream here. I'm going to pour that that's in. That's real cream, too. Real cream. And I have some salt and pepper I'm going to throw in here. Mm -hmm. And yes. you really do want that to kind of just hang out longer than we're going yeah, to. Yeah, we're um, speed cooking here, which we, we want the to do. Because we have important we want people, people to, to get meet to. Wayne. Yes, we have important things to do. Yep. Okay, I'm just heating this up for a minute so that the cream cheese will melt because we have cream and cream cheese. So, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I think um, when people see the pictures, what we're going to show them, it's so humbling. Mm. But it's also like, hey, this is the family of God. These, mm -hmm. are, these are my relatives. Yep. Okay. It's hot now, so let's get the cream you cheese can, in um, there. You're probably already getting a little vision of what this is like, because uh, does this go on top of it? or? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you're just going to hold on. Just give me a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to melt. I think this is another one I might fix. Uh, and this would be vegetarian, but you could certainly add some chicken to it. Yes, so Susan's going to be very happy today. Yeah, we got a vegetarian in the building. Yes, vegetarian so. in the house. Oh, that looks okay. so good. I just taste it. Got to taste it. Yeah. Mm. How can that I not? Could have the, yeah, how can I that, could eat that. How can that not be good? Here's another one I will fix for sure. You need to have us over, maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe you should have some of us over. Mm -hmm. You can just cook for us. You want to do that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bring a covered dish. Yeah. <laughs> nothing okay. Like, Do you want to put the lemon juice in? When I was a, a kid, you know, there was nothing like those church suppers. Oh, gosh. You want yes. this? Um, almost. Almost. Okay. Give me two seconds here. How about the tomatoes? Okay. And as these are plum tomatoes. That, that was, I'm not, I'm not even paying attention. That was lemon juice you just put in. Yes. Okay. And these are plum tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to put some parsley. parsley. Use my fingers. Yep. And then we're going to put a little bit of the pasta in here. Yeah, just to. Yeah, I think it costs for eight ounces, and we, yeah, we cooked we, up a little more than that. Yeah. Let me get this out. And you know, as good as that sauce looks, I might just double that sauce. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Although it's absorbing it pretty well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. All right. Oh. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you ready? Let me get it off the heat so it doesn't burn. Get this. Mm. We'll take a little bite. Just yes. Now don't forget, you got to put your little topping on there. Oh yeah. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it so pretty. Yes. And so you got the lemon on the top and the lemon inside. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No close-ups. No close-ups. Mm. Wow. <laughs> We're good. Oh, my. That is <laughs> delicious. Whoa. So delicious. Hey, you want this. Mm -hmm. And you can have it for absolute free. Uh, the information is coming up on your screen. Best way is email, but write to us. We'll get it out to you. Now, stay with me. Your heart's going to be warmed when you hear the story of these wonderful churches being built. Stay with me. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org.
All right, I'm very glad to introduce to you missionary Wayne Deary, uh, founder of the Plant International. Yes. So you plant churches. Yes, we do. We plant uh, churches in areas where there are little or no gospel message, and we're doing that on the border of Kenya and Tanzania right now, and we also build the church buildings for them as well. What led you to this? Were you raised in a Christian home? Did the Lord call you to be a missionary when you were a little boy? No, actually, uh, I did not grow up in a Christian home. Uh, I had a very good family and a good upbringing, but without God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got into uh, drugs and alcohol, and um, we were uh, selling uh, cocaine and all kinds of mess. Well, anyway, just got radically saved and gave my life to Jesus. And... Uh, and so uh, we would travel and take planes over and pick up drugs and bring them back and stuff. And so I did that for the enemy. Now I get to do it for God, and this time we now travel. And so I've always had a love to travel and do that. I've pastored, I've youth pastored, but my heart, I just always loved missions, and we would always take missions trips and do things for the Lord. And I just realized uh, that this avenue would eventually happen for us. And so we just waited uh, for the opportunity to be able to step out in faith and do this. And so, so we're doing it now and we're loving every minute of it. I think God has somewhat of a sense of humor. You have somebody smuggling drugs, I guess, yeah. in and out, that taking them. It. And God says, I think I'll use him. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah absolutely. He's used to traveling. so yeah, He's used to traveling. <laughs> the travel's a little different, yeah, but yes, yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We love it. Yeah, so uh, where was your first venture? Because you just had to learn this on your own, just cold turkey, right? Yeah, well, you know, early on uh, when I was a youth pastor, we would take several missions trips, and and so we went to a place called Chiapas where they were building churches uh, where is in that? Mexico. What continent? In, in Mexico. Mexico. Uh, and at that time was a very, very hard area. And uh, I learned from a man named Larry Myers, uh, mostly from a distance, and saw his heart. He did almost the exact same thing I did later in life left a, a vibrant church as a, as a senior pastor. He left and started building churches and nobody believed he could do it and they said he was crazy. And uh, for years that man built a church every 10 days somewhere in Mexico and built hospitals and dental uh, clinics and, and uh, Bible colleges and he was an inspiration. I said one day I'm going to do that. I don't know where but I am going to do it. Well. Your mother-in-law, Jenny Oliver, is a wonderful colleague of mine for mm -hmm. many years, and and she's told me these stories mm -hmm. <laughs> where you're ready to go and you're a few thousand dollars short, and just last at the minute. last minute it comes. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you one quick story. We were in uh, Daytona, and I always pre preached this church, and I was leaving in a week. I needed $7,600. And so the pastor, he said, you know, they've given us wonderful love offerings, but nothing even close to that. It was a small church, and I was on the board of that church, and we come every year. And he said, well, how much do you need? I said, and I always know how much I need because, you know, God wants to do a miracle. And if you don't know what you need, then when it comes, how do you know if it's mm -hmm. a miracle or not, you know? So anyway, we, uh, uh, long story super short, we needed $7,600, and uh, we got... Uh, uh, a person came from Canada, just came to the church that day, drove by, saw it, they were on vacation, they came in. The church gave uh, $2,600. He wrote a check for $5,000. It was exactly $7,600 exactly. that day. So we're just and in tears, leaving, we're crying. Just, yeah, you leaving yeah. Just that week. Yeah. yeah, so it was just a miracle. And we see that happen all the time. People just come up and say, God told me to give you this. And, uh, you know, when God is in it, Sounds he like provides. the days of the apostles, you know. <laughs> well, it gives me a heart attack sometimes, uh -huh. you know, and I try to tell the Lord it would, I would much rather have, you know, it earlier. <laughs> uh, you can do it in a miracle form just a little earlier, you know, but, uh, you know, um, these miracles touch people's hearts. And it also allows you to look at this and say, man's not doing mm -hmm. this. God's doing this. God is in charge. God's the one that provides. And so we just lift up our hands. We pray. We work hard, but, but we pray hard, and, and we believe God for the miracles. We're going to show the pictures in just a second, okay. but I'd like to kind of set the stage for it. You go to these 
obscure villages mm -hmm. no one's ever heard of. That mm -hmm. I don't know how you find them. And uh, people are still, although it's not the Middle East, but they're still living like Abraham with their yeah. sheep. Sheep, goats, Very cattle. simple kind mm -hmm. of work. Absolutely, yeah. And they have no church building at all. Somebody's no. told them about Jesus because so, mm -hmm. there's a nucleus there. Mm -hmm. And um, They have I believe, church under a tree. Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe with I read on your Facebook where people had worshipped under a tree for mm -hmm. a long time. Some are real. Some of the first ones we've, we did were some pastors were believing God for a church building for 20 years. Uh, the first you go building there, we ever built. Overnight. Yeah, first one we ever built. Uh, he he believed God for 20 years. He preached under a tree, and uh, and that was the first building we ever built. Do you know how the gospel got there in the first place? Well, there was missionaries that uh, shared the gospel, but now we get to places where these small villages where there is no gospel message. Matter of fact, they've not. Uh, some of the younger kids have not even seen a white person before. So they'll call your name out like a ghost. They think you're a ghost. Or when they finally <laughs> want to talk to you, they'll rub your skin, you know, trying to get the, you know, the white off. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a really powerful thing. But that's the area God's called us How do to. the pastors get any kind of education in order to teach? Uh, there's education that we give them uh, if we start a new church. Um, do they read and all that if you gave them a... Yes, they do. Uh, some of the older ones uh, don't. Uh, some of the old time ones. But they'll go off. To, to college, God will call them, and they'll go off for a couple years, uh, four years, to get their. Where would they go? go well, there's uh, they can go Little to Bible. Nairobi. Uh, they got Bible colleges. Mm -hmm, yeah, there's areas four or five hours away that they can go to, mm -hmm. and they stay, and then they come back, uh, and we start a, a church underneath a tree for three thousand bucks. We start a church underneath the tree. Yeah, we're going to show some pictures. Okay. And you you can uh, kind of uh, tell us what's going on there. Now that looks like a church. Being built, right? Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. Uh, that's the actual finishing work there. Uh, a young couple, uh, we started that church, and then a couple years later, we came in and built them a building. And there is the pastor's home. Uh, his home? His home. That's his home. Actually, that's a nicer home because that actually has a metal roof. And those are the family. This, uh, now, area, can you get all those people in that building? Yeah, we got all those people, over 200. My first question was, why people. don't you build them bigger? <laughs> yeah. Well, what happens is we build them. There they are. We're laying hands on the side of the building, thanking God uh, for the church building. That's the dedication. That's part of the dedication, right? To, yeah, to lay it hands is. on it. Yeah. And uh, those people are so excited. That's the first one we ever built right there. And it outgrew the building. So what we do is we start a church about seven or eight kilometers away with a new pastor. And that church building, we've now uh, did three church branches yeah. out of that tell one. Us, tell us about this. This one touches my yeah, heart. Yeah, this is our clinic. Uh, we it's have a clinic. Eight, we have 18 acres out in the bush that God gave us. And uh, this is one of just a few cement Do they have buildings. any doctors and stuff Yeah, like we have uh, uh, a nurse. Uh, we have a lab technician. We have a nurse's assistant. And so this is just the beginning. This has been a huge project for us, uh, money-wise, but uh, the Lord is blessing. So, um, you know, when you compare that to the cathedrals we have here, yeah, and all God cares about your heart. Yeah. Well, you know, here in America, unfortunately, sometimes church buildings means debt. Mm -hmm. There, mm -hmm. it's a way of evangelizing. When people see that building, they see God. And they come and to see the building, and then they give their lives to Jesus. Every building we've built, the church has at least quadrupled in size. Uh, so people are coming from all over to see the building, and then they hear the gospel and give their lives to Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. Now, from this point, as they grow and all, can they, can they build other churches, or, or do they need the kind of outside help that you can offer? They do. They, they need that help. Some, the hurdle's just too big uh, for them. Uh, we've had some that were able to provide cement and, uh, you know, we want them to have to do something. Mm -hmm. So they'll either build an outside bathroom, a cho or something like that. They'll raise the money for that of their tithes from the people uh, to do that because we want them to do something. They don't, we don't want to do handouts per se. So, but there's some things they'll never be able to do, mm -hmm. you know, and so we're able to build that building for them and help them and therefore spreading the gospel so much faster. Uh, by being able to help them uh, in, in that degree. So these church, you know, buildings now, when they get grown and we plant another uh, church out of that, 
uh, and then after two years, we'll come in and build them a building. So for 8,000 bucks, we can build that building, which is just really nothing uh, compared to what they cost here. Yeah, let me mention the websites on the screen, friends. There's a lot of people that have $8,000 that... They, they, they do. Or to plant a church for 3000 where there absolutely is no church happening. Nobody being saved. Now we're going so far out in these villages that they don't know the gospel. You know, it looks like the end of the world it, it, when it, you look at the pictures. Yeah. You know, they live in, you know, mud and cow dung huts. You know, this is, this is their life, livelihood. And they don't have Jesus. And we need to take the gospel to these people mm -hmm. at whatever cost uh, that it takes to make that happen. Where, where do you stay? Uh, he's my Facebook friend, by mm -hmm. the way. And... Um, I saw somewhere we could hardly wait to get out to get a shower. So yeah. <laughs> where do you stay and how long do you have to go without a shower? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, we, uh, we use a lot of wipies. <laughs> and uh, I actually now have a home in Maji, a place called Majimoto, right by where my, our clinic is, 18 acres out there. So I do now have a home where we pipe in uh, water from a spring, a nearby spring. And so, but it's not a hot shower. You know what I'm saying? So when we get back to you Nairobi, you go to civilization with a hot I, shower. I'll go a month without without a hot shower. Now I do, you know, take water and uh, give myself a bath. But to be able to sit under hot <laughs> water, you know, how and, long is that first shower when you get back? Oh, it's a good. You know, I get once I get in Nairobi, I'm able to have one. Even that is not like your home hot shower. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that and ice because I don't have ice That's out a luxury, there. right? So when I get back to Nairobi, I'm like, give me anything with a lot of ice, you know, because nothing is cold uh, there because you don't have, refer I don't have refrigeration. What do you eat? I eat a lot of the vegetables there are fantastic. Best eggs on the planet are really? out there. Yeah, they're just... Well, they don't mess with them. No, they don't no, put hormones in No, you don't have to refrigerate mm -hmm. them and they're fantastic. So mostly mm -hmm. uh, I'm eating vegetables and I eat goat. And, uh, is goat good? Goat is delicious. Uh, you just want to make sure. I actually own goats now there. And so we're oh, you're in, a goat. Yeah, so we have all our pastors come in for their conferences and we'll. we'll I don't think goats allowed in the Le Levitical law, is it? I, well, you know what? We eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank God for grace, right? <laughs> so Absolutely. sometimes I wish I hadn't ate it because I, I have gotten a hold of some that wasn't as fresh as it should have been and have, have gotten sick. But. Uh, but uh, for the most part, yeah. It's, it's Tell good. me about their family structure. Mm -hmm. I've had missionaries on before to talk about that mm -hmm. <clears throat> so often. Mm -hmm. They put America to shame. They put American Christians to shame yeah. in the, the way their families operate. Yeah. The, the moms, the wives do everything. They actually build the mud huts. They do everything. And... Uh, uh, and, and to the point where it's not good. And so we're no. teaching them how to, you know, uh, and, and, and not westernizing them, you mm -hmm. know. And so uh, we now have our very first woman pastor. You're kidding. Nope. Was and that a struggle? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Matter of fact, I told them we were going to build our building, and I had other pastors say, no, we don't build women buildings. And I said, well, we are. And so we are waiting now for the funds to build they, her building. Well, of course, you're dealing with Christians there, but overall, mm -hmm. uh, are they pretty faithful? Uh, Extremely faithful. Marriages Yeah. So, and, last? Yeah, and in this culture, you can have more than one wife. And so, of course, when they give their lives to Jesus, we tell them, you know, one wife, that's all you need. You don't need uh -huh. any more. Uh, and they're following that. Uh, but some of the old timers have more than one wives, and, uh, and so... Uh, in that culture, uh, they have many, many children. You know, when you go to church here, it's 25% children, 75% uh, adults. There, it's the opposite, uh, just because the population is just way more children uh, than adults. In the, uh, like in the bigger cities, you mentioned Nairobi and all, um, is there a lot of, of uh, Islam, a lot of Muslim yeah, believers? Yeah, right now, about an hour away from us where we buy all our supplies, uh, Muslims are now paying people to convert. So really? they're paying them, yes, they're paying them to convert. But the government gives me the land. 
The that government was, I wanted to ask you that. Where'd you land. get those acres? Yeah, the government comes in and either they provide it or someone in the congregation will give an acre. But when the government gives it, they give us five to seven acres. They come right out the community and they hammer out. Is it a the Muslim government? No, absolutely not. Matter of fact, so. they do that because they don't they, they want to populate Christianity. They love well, what we're doing. Yeah. Well, I have this belief, get them saved and then educate them. Mm -hmm. Any plans for uh, Christian schools there? We have this wonderful gal who used to, maybe you know her, Linda Brown, I don't know, but she used oh, to yeah. be floor director here. Yeah, I know Linda well. Uh, her school is just She started right, a school, yeah. yeah. She's 45 minutes from us. Yeah. Love Linda. It's fantastic. Her school is, is awesome. Linda's kids. It is, it's amazing what they're doing. But in Kenya, it's not like America. You, I go into schools and preach Jesus, and they sing Christian songs. They talk about God. It's not for, forbidden to do that. You're talking uh, about Kenya? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was just wondering, in some of these villages, uh, there any plans to like start a Christian Yeah, school? Yeah, in the villages, there you have to pay for school. So the, the hard thing is some of these people don't have the money, so their kids become uneducated, mm -hmm. and, and that's sad. And so we've now started two churches underneath a tree, and in that village they had no school. So we started a school as well. Now we don't fund that school, but we got a teacher to come in and out of some of the church money, pay for her. Teach them to read, you know. They're teaching the Bible and teach them to read. underneath the tree, the same place that we, uh, oh, man. Uh, we started the church. And we're going to build them a building and they'll now be using our buildings uh, for a school. Praise God. Yeah, we're so out we're of excited. time. I could talk to you all day. Yeah. We're out of time. But I, and I know too that my viewers... Uh, Boy, they're interested in the things of the Lord and, mm -hmm. and to hear, uh, boy, what's so minuscule next to what we kind of require here in the United States of America. Uh, Wayne's been on the program once before, but I, it's been a long time. I wanted you to meet him and know what he's doing. I, I know you well enough to know that those pictures really touched your heart. And if you want to help him out, boy, that's fine with me. That would make me very happy. Uh, we are out of time, though. And I'm uh, so very thankful to be able to bring you uh, these kind of guests uh, because the wonderful thing about Christian television, is you can find out what the Lord is doing literally around the world. So join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.